first in, first out, load, and unload. These are normally referred to as FIFO load and unload. FIFO instructions are used to load values into a file one at a time in a stack. There is always a length associated with any of the FIFO instructions. Let's say the length is 10 and for a uh, easy to visualize application let's pick a conveyor and off of this conveyor there is a spur, a dead-end spur, meaning that cartons can be pushed off of the main trunk onto the spur but they can only travel so far and then they dead end at the end of the conveyor which means that cartons can be pushed onto the spur or can be fed off of the spur back out onto the main trunk. Therefore if you were to push cartons onto that spur the first one in would be the last one out. Now let's take that same spur and have it extend from one trunk conveyor to another trunk conveyor, meaning that you can push cartons off of the main trunk onto the spur and then at the other end of the spur it empties back out onto another trunk conveyor. So the first carton pushed off onto the spur would be the first one out on the other end. So that would be a first in, first out. The act of pushing a carton off of the first trunk line onto the spur would be loading a carton onto that spur. The act of that carton reaching the other end and going out onto another trunk line would be the unload. So let's say that that conveyor, that spur between the two trunk conveyors is capable of holding 10 cartons, leaving a little bit of space in between them so you can singulate them with photo eyes and speed controls. And let's say that there were many different products in the cartons. As you push a carton off onto the spur, you would then load the product code into the first word in the FIFO stack. And then as another one got pushed off, it would displace the first one further onto the conveyor. The second one, it's product code would then be loaded into the second word in the FIFO stack. If you unload the conveyor, the spur conveyor or the FIFO, then when you use the unload, the first one in is always the first one out. Hence FIFO, first in, first out. You have written this rung or two of logic, downloaded it, and gone online. Now we had you open data file N7 and lock it on top as shown below. And if there were any values in data file N7, change them all to zero so you're starting with a clean slate. And you're going to observe 11 registers in the data file N7. Now the length is 10, so we are concerned with 10 registers in this stack. While observing the 11 registers in data file N7, start and stop the elapsed time capture sequence. Do it once. Now when you did this the first time, where or which address, which memory location did the logic put the first captured ET? Right, N7 copied from N70. So N70 was copied into N71. Now we had to capture another elapsed time. Where did the second ET get recorded? That's correct. N70 was copied into N72. And as you continue to capture more ETs, the third one went in N73, the fourth one in N74, etc. Next we had you continue until you had almost completely filled up the stack. Then we paused and then had you watch more closely and execute the logic one more time, capture one more elapsed time. 
when this last ET was captured, what changed in the logic? Correct, the done bit was set to the true state or the done bit was turned on. Now then I had you execute the ET capture one more time. What happened after the done bit came on and you tried to capture another ET? Nothing. When the stack is full, it's done. Execute the ET capture several more times. Does anything change? No, it doesn't. Done means done. When it's finished, it's finished. When it's full, it's full. Now we've added the FIFO unload instruction. While observing the value in register N71 and the destination for the unload, N720, we had you toggle switch number two. When you toggled switch number two and executed the FIFO unload, what changed with the status of the FIFO stack? the done bit was no longer set because you went from the stack being full to having unloaded one value from the stack so the stacks no longer full you now have a uh, vacancy of one word also what happened to the value in N71 the value was unloaded to memory location N7 colon 20 Consequently, what happened to the values in N72 through N710, in other words, the rest of the stack? All values shifted one location towards N71. So N71 was the first location, memory location, loaded, and it was the first one unloaded. So first in, first out. Now, while observing the value in register N710 and destination N720, execute the ET capture logic again. Where did the new captured ET get recorded? N710. Because remember, first in, first out. So the last one will always be the last one out. You could say last in, last out if you like instead of first in, first out. But they call them FIFOs. Okay, while observing the value and register N71 and N720 again, toggle switch to several repetitions. Okay, you might want to repeat this several times until you firmly grasp the pattern that these two instructions effect on that stack of memory locations. Now, if you were to compare N71 as the top of the stack and N710 as the bottom of the stack, would you say that new items are placed on the top or the bottom of the stack? Correct, the bottom of the stack. And when objects are removed, they are taken off of the top or the bottom of the stack. Correct, the top of the stack.